Welcome to the second lesson in sound school, the intro to signal. In the first lesson, we talked about sound waves, primarily how they exist in their acoustic form, meaning as pressure waves through air molecules. As sound engineers, we know we need to understand how sound functions in a space acoustically, but most of the work we are talking about in these lessons is done within electronic equipment. So what are we actually manipulating within our equipment? How does a sound pressure wave become something that we can work with inside the gear we are adjusting? And what even is that? Easy, it's signal. Signal is the electronic representation of an acoustic sound pressure wave. So let's go deeper here and figure out how sound pressure becomes a signal, what signal actually is once it's inside of electronic components, and how the equipment we work with acts on the signal to manipulate and shape the sound. Okay, so we have a sound that we want to manipulate with electronic equipment. Let's say it's someone playing a guitar. The guitarist plucks the strings, makes them vibrate at specific frequencies and with a specific intensity to create the desired pitch, loudness, and tone combined with the elements that the guitar is made out of and the way that the pressure waves emanating from it interact with the air molecules to create exactly the acoustic waves that we know to be the sound of guitar music. We already understand sound waves well enough to get a good picture of what's happening to make this sound in the air. But now we need to get that sound pressure into our equipment in order to use it as we want, either as a recording or as a live performance to be sent out through a PA system for a live audience to hear. We need the acoustic pressure to be converted into electrical energy so that our electronic equipment can work with it. The act of converting energy from one form to another is called transduction. Transduction occurs through a lot of different processes. A light bulb is a transducer that converts electrical energy into light and also heat, but its purpose is light. An engine in a gas-powered car converts chemical energy into mechanical energy and also heat, but mostly mechanical energy. I am a transducer that converts the energy from the food I eat into mechanical energy and also heat and also anxiety, but I digress. These are all examples of things that convert one form of energy into another form of energy, performing transduction. So for our audio engineering needs with our guitar performance, we want to use a microphone to convert acoustic sound pressure energy into electrical energy. The microphone is a transducer. It turns the sound pressure that we hear in the air into electronic signal. At the other end of our audio chain, we find another transducer in the form of a speaker. The speakers take the electronic signal and convert it back into acoustic pressure, back into the sound that radiates through the air and ultimately to our ears. Signal flow is the concept of how, where, and why audio signal travels through our sound equipment. It's very important to understand where the flow of the signal begins and ends in order to make the best decisions on where and how to manipulate it. Knowing where the signal came from and where it's going allows us to determine the point in the chain where it's going to be the strongest or the most stable or sound the most like what we want or need for our final product. It's also imperative to know how the signal is traveling through the system in order to troubleshoot in the event of a problem. Troubleshooting or problem solving is one of the most important skills to have as a sound engineer. We are handling complex systems with a lot of parts in them, often that we can't even see inside of the equipment or the walls of the studios. So there are so many things that can go wrong by being used incorrectly or simply breaking down. More often than not, things won't work the way you expect them to on the first try. And you'll have to know how to trace your signal chain from the beginning in order to find and solve your problem. The concept of signal flow can be applied to large, complex systems to help us understand how all of the parts connect together, or can be applied to a single, small piece of equipment to express how the signal travels from the input to the output. You'll see signal flow diagrams, or flow charts, in most equipment manuals. They can act as a roadmap to help you understand how to best use your signal at any point in the system, or how to troubleshoot problems when they arise. 
It's also a really good idea to draw your own signal flow diagram of your own studio or your venue when you set it up to help you visualize how signal travels through your system. Then you can use that as a reference in the event of problems or to make the best decisions when you want to add something new or make changes. Here's an example of the most basic signal flow chart that includes only the elements that we've talked about so far in this program. The microphone, the mixer, and the speaker. Gain is a term that gets thrown around a lot when talking about audio, and it's not always used correctly. You've probably heard people say, turn up the gain, or it sounds gainy, or even the terms gain structure or gain staging at some point and probably assumed it meant volume or loudness or even distortion. But to put it simply, gain just means to increase. In a piece of audio gear, the gain control will simply turn up whatever circuit it's connected to. You use the gain to increase the level of the electronic signal in that circuit. This process of increasing the gain to create more loudness is called amplification. Gain structure or gain staging is the concept of how an electronic signal is increased over a longer chain of electronic circuits and what order they are arranged in. Our gain structure tells us at what point in our signal path there is a stage of gain and how that will affect the sound in the rest of the circuit. Understanding the gain structure of our system allows us to make the very best choices to achieve the cleanest sound. But what does that even mean? The cleanest sound. Well, we've all heard bad sound, right? When something sounds bad, it's usually because the parts of the sound that we want to hear are clouded over by unwanted sounds like hum, hiss, or buzz, or sound distorted or fuzzy or crackly. It turns out that most of these problems are caused by poorly used gain structure. The best way to understand where the bad sounds come from is to learn the concept of the signal to noise ratio. The signal to noise ratio in a piece of equipment or sound system is, in simple terms, how many decibels fit into the system between the point of the sound being audible and the point of it being so loud that the system is overloaded. Decibels, of course, are the unit of loudness. More decibels means a louder sound. Fewer decibels is a quieter sound. When we're talking about decibels and loudness in a piece of electronic gear, the decibels are a measurement of electronic energy rather than acoustic pressure. In this case, more voltage means a louder sound. And so we use a unit of measurement called dBV, decibel voltage, which is the intensity of the electricity that is our sound inside the system. So in any electronic system, there exists some naturally occurring inherent electronic noise. Every electrical device that exists creates some of its own noises, simply by the nature of how electricity works. Electricity is the flow of electrons from one atom to another through the wires. And this process gives off heat and often vibrations. And that heat and vibration makes a sound. It's usually very quiet and can't really be heard. But in an audio system with lots of gain stages, where we are constantly amplifying the electronic signal, this naturally occurring noise can become louder and louder. This naturally occurring inherent noise inside of an electronic audio device is called its noise floor. When a device is made, it's tested to see what the dBV level of its noise floor is. And that value is included in the technical specifications. Higher quality devices will have a lower noise floor, which means that they make less of their inherent noise. So why do we care? Well, if the equipment is making its own electronic noise and we wanna send an audio signal through it, that means we need to make sure we can hear our audio signal over top of the noise floor. Our signal needs to be louder than the noise floor. And then if our signal is only slightly louder than the noise floor, and we use the gain control on the device to turn it up louder, we will also be amplifying the noise floor along with it. 
So this is where sounds like hiss and hum come from. These are the inherent noise floor electrical sounds of the device being amplified along with our signal. So we need to be sure we're using a loud enough signal with a strong enough voltage to overcome the noise floor. But then why not just make the signal super mega extremely loud all the time? Doesn't this just mean louder is better? No, because every device has a limit to how much voltage can safely pass through it. Our signal is voltage traveling through the device, and the components that it's built out of can only handle so much voltage for a lot of different reasons. Again, we are talking about signal, which is electrons flowing from atom to atom within the wires of our devices. There are only so many electrons in so many atoms to carry this signal through the circuit. There's a limit to the level of the flow of electrons through wires and components. Every device will have its own specified number of dBVs that it can carry before it hits that limit. If you try to push more through that circuit, it will cause the sound to lose clarity. The electricity will still pass, but it won't have the same accuracy. It will gradually just become a mush of electricity that will sound worse and worse the louder it goes as it gets forced through a circuit that can't carry it. And eventually enough voltage will even cause the components to break and burn, causing real damage. But long before it causes real physical damage to the equipment, it will cause audible damage to the sound. And you'll hear distortion when you exceed the capacity of a device. Let's look at what's happening to our electronic signal waves in between the noise floor and the limit of our circuit. We can draw an electronic signal wave exactly the same way we drew our waves that represented acoustic air pressure. There's a wave of positive electron flow followed by a wave of negative electron flow as it travels through the circuit. It's literally an electronic representation of the pressure wave in the air that has been converted to electricity by our microphone. It's the same diagram of a sound wave that we saw before but now it represents voltage instead of acoustic pressure. So now let's look at a graph that shows no signal. The noise floor or inherent sound of the device will be really low, but it will be there. There might be a few different kinds of sounds like hum and hiss and buzz, so we can draw a few different waves. Now, if we send our sound into this circuit, we need to make sure it's louder than these noises. If it's not louder, it could end up getting mixed up with the noise floor, and then when we try to turn it up using the gain, we would just turn everything in the circuit up and end up hearing the sounds we don't want. And then here's the other side of the scale, the maximum level that the circuit can handle. Here's our audio wave traveling through the device. So what happens when it's too much for the circuit? Well, it actually gets held down or clipped off. It changes the actual shape of the waveform. The wave gets held down as the electrons get smushed through and the smooth curves of our wave get cut off. So what do you think this waveform would sound like if it were played back through a speaker? It would be a buzz or a crackle, the sounds we call distortion. We use the term distortion because that's exactly what's happening to the waveform. The circuit is distorting it. Sometimes we also say clipping because of the way the crest of the wave gets clipped off. Sometimes we'll even say square wave because it's been essentially turned into a square. Now, there are a lot of devices that use distortion purposefully, especially electric guitar related devices. At some point in the mid 20th century, people realized the sound of an overloaded guitar amp made the tone extra interesting. And ever since then, distortion has been used creatively to shape sounds and create unique tones and textures. When you see a gain knob on a guitar amp or pedal, this is the dedicated amplification stage for driving the signal extra hard into the circuit to purposefully overload it. In this case, the gain knob is intended to add distortion. But that doesn't mean gain always adds distortion. It just means in this case, the amplification is being done intentionally to create a harsher sound by exceeding the capacity of the circuit. So now we know the risks of having too much or too little signal. 
And maybe now you can also understand how we would need to be selective when we choose to amplify or increase the gain. In order to have the cleanest and clearest signal for the sound that we desire in our mix, we need to always be aware of the different stages in our circuit that it is being amplified or its gain stages. Keeping in mind that we want to have enough signal to get over the noise floor without overloading the circuit, we can now choose when in the process to amplify or adjust to keep it loud enough without causing distortion. If you're hearing noise floor or distortion, you can always have a look at the flow chart for your device or sound system, and then check what you've done at the various gain stages to see if maybe you've turned up the noise floor or clipped the signal. The goal is to understand the flow of your system enough so that you won't have to always look at your diagram whenever you hear a problem. With time and practice, you'll hopefully be able to hear a sound and know which stage of the system you need to address to make it sound the way you want it to. Thank you.